In this video, we're going to look at the Haber process, which is the industrial production of ammonia from nitrogen and hydrogen. And in particular, we'll consider why the reaction is always done at a temperature of 450 degrees Celsius and a pressure of 200 atmospheres, alongside an iron catalyst. The reason everyone learns about the Haber process is that it's one of the most important reactions in the world. This is because the ammonia that it produces is used to make nitrogen-based fertilizers, which allow us to grow all of the food that we need to feed everyone. In order to make such huge amounts of ammonia though, we need a massive amount of nitrogen and hydrogen. The nitrogen is easy to acquire because 78% of the air all around us is nitrogen. So we just take it from the air. Hydrogen though is a bit tricky to get hold of as we have to make it from hydrocarbons like methane. Now, two important things to notice about this reaction are that it produces heat, which means it's exothermic, and that it has a two-way reaction arrow, which means that it's reversible. So some of the ammonia that gets formed will break back down to reform nitrogen and hydrogen. The next thing we need to look at is how the process works. And for that, it's helpful to choose a diagram of the machines that they use. It doesn't look quite like this in real life, but the basic idea is the same. The first step is to take the hydrogen and nitrogen that we're using as reactants and feed them into the top left of the machine where they can mix together. We call this first part the reaction vessel and it's where the conditions are kept at 450 degrees Celsius and 200 atmospheres. And the gases are free to pass over this iron catalyst. Under these conditions, some of the nitrogen and hydrogen react together to form ammonia. But importantly, because it's a reversible reaction, the mixture will still contain lots of nitrogen and hydrogen. This means that we need to somehow separate the ammonia that's been formed from the nitrogen and hydrogen that haven't reacted. Luckily, ammonia has a fairly low boiling point. And so by passing the entire mixture through this pipe into the condenser, which is much colder than the reaction vessel, we can cool down the gaseous ammonia until it condenses into liquid ammonia. Whereas the gaseous nitrogen and gaseous hydrogen will stay gaseous because they have higher boiling points. And so they can be recycled back around into our reactant mixture. Now that we know how it works, the last thing we need to cover is why the Haber process uses the conditions of 450 degrees and 200 atmospheres. And as we consider each condition, we need to bear in mind three things. The percentage yield, the rate of the reaction, and any practical things like cost. Let's start with temperature. Because the reaction is exothermic, we're gonna need a low temperature in order to favor the forward reaction and achieve a higher percentage yield. The problem though, is that in order to achieve a higher rate of reaction, we need a high temperature because the particles need plenty of kinetic energy in order to react. As a consequence, 450 degrees is chosen as a compromise. Even though it gives us a lower yield, it causes a higher rate of reaction. Finally, generating heat is expensive, so using a higher temperature would be too costly. If we turn to pressure, in order to achieve a high percentage yield of ammonia, we're gonna want a high pressure because there are fewer molecules of gaseous product than there are reactants. So a high pressure will push the equilibrium to the right. We also want a high pressure to achieve a high rate of reaction because high pressures mean that the particles collide with each other more frequently and so can react more. In this case, both of the points indicate that we need a high pressure. So the only thing limiting how high we make the pressure 
are the practical considerations like cost and safety. Maintaining a high pressure is very expensive, and if anything goes wrong, high pressures can be really dangerous. And so 200 atmospheres turns out to be the best pressure. Anyway, that's everything for this video. So hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you again soon.